Hello, this is Sassy Beauty 69, also known as K. I know I haven't done a video in a while. Um, been working on myself and getting better, getting well as far as therapy, um, psychiatric and social therapy. Uh, and and in four days will be the anniversary of losing my twin boys, as I've talked about in a few of my videos. And I've been severely depressed. I prepared myself for it and thought I would be able to handle it. But I guess as a mother, it just hits you. No matter how hard and how strong you try to be, it just hits you. And what hurts me most is I know I've mentioned that I'm going through a divorce, which isn't final yet. But what hurts me most is my husband stating that I was never pregnant. And he put his hand on my belly. When you're pregnant with twins, you're, you're, you put on a great deal of weight. And he put his hand on my belly. We have photos of me being pregnant. We have sonograms. We heard the boy's heartbeat. The boys was, um, they discovered that the boys would be born with sickle cell. And I don't know. It just, it's going to make me sadder. And I have to get through the day. And I don't want to get through the day in bed, you know, crying and sleeping. So I don't really want to really go into it. But it just hurts me. It hurts me to my heart to be married to a man that completely denies it. That we were pregnant. I went through that. I told him I went through that in my first marriage. But my husband came to realize that. You know, it was just something that he said, you know, because he was being a follower. But as we progressed in our in our pregnancy, he realized that, you know, we're having a child together. And it hurts me more so because my husband was so happy. And now that they're not here, he's saying that they were non-existent and for me to grieve as much as I have grieved I don't I'm not deliberately taking my life and grieving on purpose this is not something made up this is real I asked him laying in bed many times to put his hand on my tummy to feel his babies move I don't know. It, the whole divorce is hurting me because he wants the entire marriage to be non-existent. But to simply say that our children were non-existent as well. I'm already hurting because he hurt me. And to say that two children that I carried for him, that was by him, that I named after him, that I grieve over, were non existent. And you want me to also pretend like we were never married and it threw away. The time that we were married and we I spent with you. That hurts me more than anything. Because my love is not non existent. I spent so much time and energy with this man. And I loved him. And he hurt me. He hurt me so bad. And every time there's a reminder or we have to go to court, 
I hurt even more. Up until this point, I have been calm, cool, and relaxed, and I've handled myself very well. <laughs> but as we approach the anniversary of the loss of our twin, I'm very angry and hurt. <laughs> and for him to just brush off my feelings as if they're not existent, it hurts even more. And normally I discuss what it's like to have fibromyalgia. I just wanted to discuss what it's like to lose your loved one, your babies. Never have the opportunity to hold them in your arms. To have, you know, when they say you put the baby on the mother's chest. You could have that connection. <laughs> I never got the chance. <laughs> I never got the chance. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to make it through trying to do this video. <laughs> because. This is the first time I've actually, I've actually talked about this and expressed my feelings. And since he did not, that it, just, it hurts me to the core. Because I was carrying his. And I really felt him growing inside of me. They was hyper like our daughter, full of energy. I'm very still. I'm very calm. I'm very quiet. And those boys. They were so active. They would keep me up at night. They were so, they were so much like him. <laughs> they were so much like him. And if you look at the sonograms and compare the pictures, it look like him. And God knows if they were here today, I would be going through hell with him. He wouldn't be taking care of his responsibility, and I know that. So it's probably for the best. But it still hurts. It still hurts. <laughs> My therapist said I should do a memorial for them. <laughs> Last September. My due date was August 9th. And so September. Initially I had the memorial planned in August. <laughs> But I had trouble trying to get everyone together. So I decided to do a Memorial Day. I mean, a Labor Day weekend, sorry, in September. And I planned it. And I went through all the trouble planning it. And I invited his family. And no one responded. It was like, are you serious? <laughs> So my social worker said, what am I going to do this year? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm touching my face. 
I dreamed about them a couple of weeks ago. And I held them both in my arms. And I touched their cheeks. And I held their hands. And it was so small. So frail. This time, I will never have, I will never get back. I will never get back. I have three beautiful children, four beautiful grandkids. But I thought that I was going to have the opportunity to be a mother again and do it right. I was so happy. I can't do anything.